hate. Okay, so if you've ever done a Facebook Live, it is so annoying because you spend all this time getting it set up, and then once you go live, it like crops into your face more, so it's a bad picture. Anyway, though, we're I'm back tonight with Facebook Lives. You can hear my dogs; they're super excited about it. I have it on Instagram. I have it on Facebook. So if you keep on seeing me, look over there. That is why. So let's get to the topic tonight. So actually, before that, let me just explain what I do here with these lives. So I'm doing these every other week. And um, really, it's an opportunity for you to learn more about wildlife biology careers. But it is also a time for you to ask whatever questions you want. So I will have a topic. And um, usually I have a question. Oh, my. OK, there we go. Usually I have a question. But um, you can ask whatever you want. So um, I always love to know like where my followers are um, coming from in terms of like what background they have. So if you're watching live, if you could comment either on Instagram or on Facebook, if what stage you are at in your wildlife biology career. So are you in college? Are you an undergraduate in college? Are you graduated? Are you in graduate school or, or any of those in, in between? Just um, write in the comments where you guys are and that just helps me, um, it helps me with the information in terms of like how I can target my audience or in how, how I can target my contact content. Okay, so again, if you have a question, feel free to drop it in the comments and I will answer it. But if not, let's go ahead and get into the topic. So today we are talking about how to stand out in a sea of applications. So um, when we talk about applications, I mean job applications. So I have been doing all of this research. I have been inviting people who want to go into this career on calls with me. And they have been um, answering this question, what is your biggest struggle? Hi, Natasha. <laughs> That's great. You're applying to graduate schools. So I've been asking people, like, what is your biggest struggle? Um, I've been asking people who are still in college, who have graduated, those who are in graduate school. And a lot of them say that their biggest struggle is how do I stand out? So they are applying for job after job after job and they are not getting any interviews. So I am hearing this a lot across all levels. And another thing that I commonly hear is that so many people are frustrated because they feel like they've done everything right, and they probably have. In other words, they, um, they worked really hard in school, they studied really hard, they got the experience, and you get that feeling that you are a really great candidate, and you are, but then when you apply for jobs, you, you don't hear anything back. You're, you're not getting any feedback. You're not getting invited for interviews. It is just crickets. So, um, so tonight, I am giving you some advice. I'm giving you three tips for how you can stand out for these jobs. And um, I also want to tell you that I've heard from so many different people, too, that they're applying to jobs where they are competing against hundreds of other people, like, like literally hundreds and hundreds of other people. And I heard this from both the employer side and from the, the employee side. Um, so, so that is definitely happening. And so you, you need to stand out if you are going to be amongst hundreds of other people. So, okay, here are my three tips. So the first one is um, honestly one that a lot of people don't talk about, but I think it is the most important tip. 
and that is to apply for jobs that you are competitive for. So I will see on these different Facebook groups, these Facebook wildlife groups, people talking about how they have to apply for hundreds of jobs and then you'll just get lucky. You'll get that, that one job or, or you'll get a couple of interviews and then you'll get one job. No, I think that is terrible, terrible advice. There is no way that you can be qualified for hundreds of interviews a year. You're just or if you're qualified, not competitive. So maybe like, you know, 20, 30 years ago when there were a lot few of us out there, a lot fewer of us out there, you could be, you know, qualified and, and stand out. But now when you have tons of people qualified, actually, I was just talking to um, one of my former lab mates. She's a good friend of mine. And she is advertising for a master's position. And she was just telling me how amazing her applicants were. Like one of the applicants has 11 years of experience and this is for a master's position. So unfortunately the standards have changed and they've increased a lot. So you gotta apply for only the jobs that you are really competitive for and really focus your energy on those jobs. Every time you apply for a job, no matter how straightforward it is, it's going to suck some energy and time out of you. So the more that you, and, and we have limited amount of energy. Nobody has, like, I mean, yes, you go to sleep and you wake up and you re-energize and stuff, but there's only so much you can get done in a day. So instead of applying to lots of jobs and doing it as fast as possible because you have to reach that, that 100 plus criteria that people are saying that you should do, I think you should apply for a, like fewer jobs and ones that you are really qualified for. So qualifications, how do you know if you're qualified? Well, um, so I, I go deep into this in um, the program that I run, but basically I think you have to be around like 95% of the the requirements or preferred qualifications. So if it is a bird job and like the number one thing they say is bird banding and you don't have any bird banding experience, you're probably not going to get that job unless it's in a really undesirable location where a lot of people don't want to work and there's not that many applicants. So I, when I first graduated with my, my PhD, I applied for just like all different types of jobs. I applied for, I remember I applied for nature conservancy jobs in California and like consulting jobs and stuff like that. And I really didn't want to get a postdoc because postdocs are temporary. I wanted to get a job and move there. But the only or most of the jobs, and one other job I got an interview, but really most of the jobs that I got interviews for were all postdocs. And the reason why is because those jobs were very similar to what I did in my PhD. In other words, I was really competitive for them. So I had basically the exact experience that they were looking for. So once you change your strategy to applying for the right jobs, you should see an increase in the um, number of interviews that you get invited to do. A big mistake that I see people making in their cover letters, this is tip number two, is that they repeat information that's on their resume. In your cover letter, you have like such precious little space. So your cover letter should probably be no longer than a page and a half single spaced. And I like to put spaces between my paragraph. So, and you need a strong introduction statement. I see so many people um, with their job or their cover letters just start by talking about, my name is this, I have this degree, and I'm interested in this job. You, you need to convey that you are the perfect candidate for that job in the first paragraph. So don't waste any time talking about how you have a degree. Everyone has a degree. If it is, if it is a requirement, and all the jobs that I've looked at, it's a requirement. Everyone has that. They can see that from your resume. So don't waste any space in your cover letter saying, I have a degree with this major, and I graduated in this year, 
it's um, it's it's boring. It's not going to make you stand out. We're talking about standing out here. So, so you want to um, really convey passion, excitement for the position, and again, that you are the perfect candidate. And you have to believe that too. You want this job, so believe that you are the perfect candidate for it. And if you don't feel like you can get that energy within yourself to do that, then then honestly, don't apply for the job. But I think you, instead you should actually really work on like on, on building yourself up, looking for the evidence that you have, that you are experienced for this job and you are a good fit. Also in your cover letter, don't just, don't spend time, um, I think I said this, but don't spend time reiterating things in general. So. So the point of the cover letter is like on your on your resume, you can see what um, somebody does. So they had this job and they did this thing. The cover letter is really to to address the th the specific things that you did and apply it to the qualifications or the desired qualifications that the job wants. So something really common is, um, you know, they will say can work well independently and can work well with teams. So you're not just gonna say I work well independently and I work well with teams. You're gonna give examples. So for me, I would say I work well independently. Um, you know, after after I did my PhD, I made sure that all chapters of my dissertation were published in academic journals. That's something that I spearheaded, and I did. Um, I mean, I had co-authors help, but like it was me driving that forward. Forward. So you want examples, and then for teamwork, like a lot of times I'll see jobs say like we want um, somebody who can work across different. Um, like cultures or different, just different types of people. And this doesn't even have to be international jobs. I've seen that locally as well. So give examples. So for me, again, I, I worked with teams of Gabonese field assistants. I, I had to speak French with them. Um, and then also I worked in rural Utah. I worked in a very um, heavily Mormon area. So, so it doesn't, again, have to be like, you don't have to have this international experience, but I worked with all different types of people. So you wanna come up, you wanna give like specific things, specific, specific examples of how your experience matches what they are looking for that job. And then if you can go above that and say what you will bring to that job, that is even that is even better. If you can talk about how you are going to um, help in that new position as well. Hi, Nathan. Nice to see you here. So if you guys are just joining, let me know. You can ask a question. I'm happy to answer it live. Um, today I am going over with just three things to make you stand out on a job like application, which I think are the three most important things. So the third one I think is passion. And this, this is kind of like number two where I talked about not reiterating your information, but really talk about how, how passionate you are about this job. And you, what I like to do again is talk about my past experiences. And if, sometimes it can be hard to make this not sound cheesy, so there is like a, a thin line you have to walk. But for example, like whenever I apply to jobs that involve science communication, I love science communication. So I talk about how I love giving talks at um, the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences. Or um, when I was, I worked at Disney World, I worked at one of the labs there. And as part of our job, we had to stand in front of the lab and talk to guests about the research that was going in the lab. And I loved that. So I bring up those specific examples and I say, I love that so much. And then I am excited to, you know, public speak again for, you know, in this position at this organization. So the one that you are applying for. But I see so many cover letters where it's just like people are just like, they're just like, I'm applying for this job. I hope you will consider my application. And again, 20 years ago, you probably could have got an interview, but now like you really have to sell yourself. You really have to believe that you are the best candidate for the job and, and convince them of that as well. 
Um, and I know I talked about experience being important, but um, passion is also incredibly important as well. So you need both. Unfortunately, passion, I don't think makes up for experience unless it's like slightly off. But if you're lacking a lot of experience, it's really hard to make up with that for passion. Okay, so those are my three tips. If you are interested in helping me with that research I was talking about, um, I am still open to interviewing people. I'm, I'm mostly looking for people who are more at the beginning of their careers. So those who are either um, late high school or in college or graduated from college. Um, I'm also, also early masters too, but like those are the areas I'm looking for. And if you've graduated from college and have some years of work experience, that's fine too. So just reach out to me. You can you can drop an emoji in the in the comments if you're on Instagram. You can um, send me a direct message, and I will get back to you. It's a 15 minute interview, and it's all anonymous. It's all just research, so I can figure out how to help you guys better. So I hope you have a great Sunday. I hope this kicks off a great work week for you. And if you're applying for jobs. Remember to, I have to look back at my tips. <laughs> Let's make sure I remember there. Remember to remember to apply for the jobs that you are most competitive for. Narrow your focus. Invest your energy into the right things. It will pay off. Number two, in your cover letter, say how you did what they are asking for. Give evidence. Demonstrate it with specific examples. And number three, express your passion. Because if you are in this field, you have to be passionate. Nobody's doing it for the money. So don't hold back. Express your passion. Okay, guys. I hope you have a great night. See you in two weeks.